Hey there everybody, it's Daikaiji Tony here, here at beautiful Cosmic Comics, the jewel of the Mojave Desert. What is the last good run of Amazing Spider-Man? Steve Ditko. Not counting Steve Ditko, <laughs> and after... No, there's a lot of good ones yeah, after that. I'm, I can't, yeah. like, even. After Jerry Conway and John Romero Jr., because even recently, with the newer stuff by Nick Spencer, as, Ross Andrus. as good as that... Uh, run had its moments it's nowhere near as good as a lot of stuff from before and i would like to bring up what i believe to be the last good amazing spider-man and the main amazing spider-man numerical uh run j michael straczynski's amazing spider-man wait a second yes <laughs> specifically when john Romero jr was doing the art it started off good that's for sure yes I believe that this is Peter Parker as Spider-Man in his peak. Peter is married to MJ. He's in his apartment with Aunt May. And this is before Civil War, right? Yes. This is before Civil War. Peter, he's not a CEO of a big corporation called Parker Industries. No, no, no. <laughs> he is Peter Parker, he's a science teacher. Right. Yep. And it's basically Peter dealing with a lot of mature issues especially as a science teacher and looking out for students where you know there are things he has to deal with like potential gun violence that happens um he's, yeah it started off super strong he notices um how one of his students is basically living in a homeless shelter and I'll, a lot of the crimes he uh, he handles he has to think of the consequences that happens with like stopping criminals like how he stopped a criminal that was a relative of one of his students. So, and the way the run examines the relationship with Peter and MJ, way more mature than a lot of the other stuff before. Because, okay, if I'm gonna be honest, the the way Peter and MJ were portrayed at a certain point after they were married, um, pretty much in every issue they were sexually active, <laughs> <laughs> uh, especially Aunt May, and one of the biggest and strongest highlights of this run was how Aunt May ended up finding out Peter Parker was Spider-Man. She knew all along, right? Oh, no. I thought when she found out, she was like, yeah, it was not a surprise. She was surprised, but um... It's been a while she, since She didn't... She, I think she had her speculations, but she didn't know how much this endangered Peter, basically. Right, right. And it was like handled so well and so much better than how Spider-Man yeah. Homecoming handled and maybe finding out Peter Spider-Man. Yeah. Um, even, yeah. The, even the more mystical aspects of it, like the whole spider totem thing, as weird as, as it is, it feels as grounded as the rest of the uh, run is. I didn't mind it, at, like the first part of it, when Moreland showed up. I thought that was interesting. I like Moreland as a villain. I like Moreland as a villain. It was the second time Moreland showed up after he was supposedly dead for no reason is when it started to go off the rails for me. Yeah. And a lot of the issues in this run, it's basically Spider-Man in his breaking point and reflecting on how he affects pretty much everyone around him, like good guys and bad guys, and how MJ is like one of his main pillars of support in his life. Right. And... What else? Which very strongly led into why he did what he did in Civil War was to keep her safe. Yes. Now we're getting into the more controversial issues, basically when Civil War started. Sins of the past. Sin oh, yeah, sins of the past. Um, <laughs> that was even before Civil War still. Yeah, well, sins of the past. It, it happens. That's all I'm going to say. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was bad. It is a one-shot and it is short, so I'm just going to say it, it happens. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was bad. Civil War, okay, he, here's... A big stark contrast between how Mark Miller writes Spider-Man and how Strzinski's... Well, the other was leading up to Civil War. Yes. Um, basically, when Strzinski writes Spider-Man, Peter has more humility and he has more concern when it comes to joining Iron Man's side of the conflict. Right. While and when Mark Miller does it, Peter, he <laughs> he does it more brashly, that's to, yeah. say, to say the least. Yeah, Peter... He did it. I think a big reason why he did it was to keep MJ and Mary and Aunt May safe, right? Yep. And then 
at a certain point, um, this led to... Just disclaimer, though. Civil War comics is not like Civil War the movie. Not at all. Yes. Not even close. And I believe Straczynski also did um, Spider-Man Black and... Back in Black, which was a pretty good run for Spider-Man, getting the black suit again, and it takes place in uh, it takes place in the era where Peter Parker's identity is revealed to the public, right. essentially, and he has to operate as Spider-Man with the black suit, with the public knowledge of Peter Parker as Spider-Man. Right. But then it gets to it finishes off with one more day. Yeah. And. Okay, I am not going to blame Straczynski for this. No. Uh, it's not his fault. He did his best. It's it was my it, understanding is he, he was getting stories were getting forced on him by that point that he didn't like, even though he was promised to have free run. Yes, which yeah, because the editor at the time, Joe Casada, he yep. was meddling with the direction Straczynski wanted Peter Spiderman's story to be at. Because if you look at Spiderman Back in Black, you could tell that. He wanted a future for Peter where he'd, you know, gradually grow old and, right. you know, develop more as a person. But with, you know, one more day, that it tragically never happened. Right. And which is why I would like to say that was the last good ASM <laughs> run that we had. And, I thought Superior and, started out good. Oh, yeah. It just kind of went on too long. Yeah. All right. Is that going to do it? Yep. That's about it. All right. See ya.